Okay. Let's go back to the basics of what it is. The Fibonacci number series. Okay, does anybody know the next number here? 21, right. Okay, so you obviously, you're adding the previous two numbers to get the next one. Okay, so 1 and 2 is 3, 2 and 3 is 5, 3 and 5 is 8. Okay, now the bigger these numbers get, the more exact the ratio is. Uh, so for instance, 55 over 89 is 0.618. Okay, if we take the alternates, 34 over 89 equals 0.382. And obviously, together, those equal the whole equal 1. All right, so in its very simplest, very, very simplest uh, form, Fibonacci is basically the division of space into, you know, 61.8% and 38.2%. That's all it is, all right? And that's what we're going to look for next. Um, We're also going to look at something that Gann thought was very important, uh, which was the 50% retracement. So instead of using a, a ratio of 61% and 38%, we're also going to use the 50% retracement. Oops. OK, now what I really like to see, if I can, is a couple of uh, Fibonacci retracements coming in at the same point. Remember we talked about earlier, I said, one of the key things that I really like to see is like if I get a daily pivot and a monthly pivot or a daily pivot and a weekly pivot coming together. Okay, that's, that's a really good base to start from. The other really good base to start from is if I get two Fibonacci ratios or a Fibonacci ratio and the 50% retracement coming together. There's a couple of examples in that in the book but, um, or in the manual. But you know, here's one of them here. Uh, there's my, uh, if I take the distance between here and here, and as I said, we're only, this is really simple. Fibonacci is a division of space, all right? If I take this space from here to here, this is, uh, I believe that was 50% uh, of that distance from here to here. And this is also 61.8% of the distance from here to here, okay? So those are clearly defined highs and lows. I'm just dividing them up according to the Fibonacci ratio and the 50% ratio. Very straightforward. Okay? No projections, no anything. This is Fibonacci at its simplest. OK, everyone clear on that one? No. OK. Again, we're going to talk about the division of space. So I know this is a low, clearly. I mean, I'm up here. I'm up here someplace. It's this day here. All right? I know that's a low. It happened like you know two months ago. I'm down here, I know that's a high, and I clearly I know that's a low. They're obvious swing lows. Everybody clear with me on that? Fine with me? Okay, so I've got this distance from here to here between the high and the low. Okay? Where's 50% uh, of it? Well, 50% of it's right there. Okay, so that's a potential point. With me on that? Okay? I've got this clearly defined swing low here, and again, I've got that same clearly defined swing high. Where is the Fibonacci 61.8% of that? Well, it's right here. Yep? If you take four days before the circle pivot low, right here? You're trying to make, yes, and you're trying to make your projection. I mean, yes, you can, you can draw a line at 50%. You can draw a line at 38.2. You can draw a line at 60. You can draw a lot, three, three or four lines there that are Fibonacci. Absolutely. Now, how do you know? Okay. Absolutely, that's a good point. What the, uh, what the question's raised is that, okay, we've got this distance here. I've got a 38%, I've got a 50%, I've got a 61.8%. Same for this distance here. That gives me six potential points, right? Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. That gives you six potential points. Why choose this one? Because this one is the only one where two of them are coming together, okay? So I've got this one between here and here. It comes to exactly that point. And this ratio between here and here also comes to exactly that point. A confluence. A confluence. Exactly. Fibonacci. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So out of the six, two of them are at the exact same price. Which ones are important, do you think? 
Okay? Then when we couple that, if I've got the low pivot there and I've got something else there, then I've got something. Okay? That's really all we're trying to do. It's not brain surgery. You can do this on any market in five or ten minutes a day. Ten minutes if you're slow. Yeah. Uh, how often do I, do I get a trade set up with what I'm going to show you today? Um, maybe once a week, maybe three times a month, you know, somewhere in there. It's not, uh, you know, you're not going to see these kind of setups set up every day. Right? Um, you just aren't. Right? But they're usually pretty good. And, yeah? Is that the frequency? Um, well, I'll tell you what, um, depending on which contest, when I first started the first contest, and we're talking about the trading contest now, all I traded was, uh, was S&Ps. And um, I think I did, let me see, uh, 42 trades in the year, that year. Okay? And it was not using, you know, your, your, your methodology is always evolving. All right? And it was not using exactly this methodology. And this isn't, I'm, I'm giving you things that we can put in 90 minutes today. Okay, do I look at other things? Absolutely I look at other things. Okay, but I'm trying to give you some stuff that, that you can really take home and say, look, I, can, I understand this, I can use it tomorrow morning. Okay, so sure I look at other things, but, um, you know, would you rather have one good trade that really sets up with a really good predefined risk that's high probability, or would you rather take a bunch of 55 percenters that you know, you don't know where your stop is. And um, I think these are generally what I'm trying to do is, is find some higher probability trades. All right, and that's what these are. And uh, by almost by definition, they're probably not going to occur every day. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm looking at it, certainly I've got two Fibonacci's, and as I said, the pivot points and the Fibonacci's I think are the core of what we're talking about today. So that's a very good start. Yeah, I'm looking at it to buy. Okay, I've already got some sort of uptrend established here. Okay, if I can get some other evidence that that's a low, then I'm buying, you know. Um, I, I, I believe that, and we're talking about exits, we might as well talk about exits now, we're almost there. Uh, you know, you, you, if you've got a confluence of of evidence at, at around 65 here that there's some good support. That doesn't mean your stop's at 64.95. I mean, you know, I trade in the cash market in, in currencies. And I'll tell you what, if somebody comes into the Swiss and sells $100 million, which is not that unusual, you know, it's going to go down a little bit. Okay, it's going to go down 10 points probably most days. All right, so, you know, I would say I trade currencies in bonds. Uh, in the currency market, I'd be looking to use maybe a four to $500 stop and somewhere around the same thing in bonds, maybe you know, like half a point in bonds. All right, I like to give it a little bit of room, even though I think I've got a high probability trade. I like to give it a little bit of room. All right, you know, sometimes it's gonna go through a few ticks. I mean, if somebody comes into the bond pit and wants to buy 300 contracts, <laughs> you know, it's gonna go through your point. But if it was really legitimate, then it's probably gonna come back down. Okay, so I do give it a little bit of room on the stop. Okay, but I don't think you need real wide stops. And, and what you're gonna find is, when we do have this good confluence of, uh, of indicators that we talked about today, you're going to get some, some trades that really pop out of there. And in terms of exiting, what I will usually do is one of the couple of exits that I will use, and one is just how big is my risk. So if I'm willing to take 400 points of risk, then I may take a little bit off when I've made you know, 400 bucks going up. Uh, but a lot of these are popping out of here pretty fast, so you can get you know, three, four times your risk uh, on a lot of these trades. Okay, so as, as, a, as a question of how do I get out of my exits, it's, it's a question of how much my risk was, too. And sometimes you're going to find when the market's really quiet, you want to tighten your stop down a little bit. Right? But generally, that's what my stops are. Okay. Yeah. Well, no. If Obviously, if, if it's this day here, okay, and I've calculated support to be, um, you know, 65.05, and the close is, you know, 6520, then I'm not going to go in at the open. I'm going to, you know, I have the ability, uh, you know, which I guess is an advantage to, to monitor the market intraday. So, you know, I'm going to watch how it sets up here. And I also have the advantage of watching how my indicators set up. So, you know, I'm giving you stuff that you can use, but, you know, at the same time, none of it's happening in a vacuum for me. And, and I will fine tune 
you know, how I get in based on how things are looking on the intraday charts and so forth. So that's an advantage for sure. Yeah? Uh, a couple of questions. One, I was wondering uh, uh, how you found that these methods can pair in using the stock market as opposed to bonds and currencies. And the second question is, um, you're using two different uh, points there to draw it, get your Fibonacci note. Uh, if in that, um, uh, after the third wave up from the bottom, if, if you had come down somewhat into a pivot point uh, there where you had a, a fourth wave down, right now, no, on the left, to the left, to the left of there. Here? There, yeah. Yeah. If you had come down there and made another uh, bottom point, pivot point, bottom, mm -hmm. Oh sure. I mean, if you get three, I, I had three in the in the in the yen about two and a half weeks ago, and it just it was it was it moved three hundred points the next day. Don't there be a question on that, please? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. The question was, um, if we've got two measurements between here and here and here and here, what happens if we had three? You know, what happens if the market hadn't made another you know intermediate term bottom here, and and we could have measured three times, and then we would have had. You know, a 50%, a 61.8, and a 38.2% retracement. Do we ever see that? Rarely. Yeah, but when you do, don't stand around. Okay? You know, pick up the phone. All right? Uh, you don't see it very often, but it's a really, really good base to start from. Okay. Yeah, you can, and that's a good question. The more confluence you have, you know, the better you, the chances you have. And as far as the stock market is concerned? Um, yeah, I think that, as I said, um, you know, a lot of the stuff that I've worked with in the past. I found, it, you know, square of nine works really good on some markets, not at all on others, or something works good here, but not so great here. What, what we've talked about today, I, you know, if you phone me up and say, Joe, what do you think of beans, and I never look at beans, everything we've talked about, I'd, I'd throw it up and see where I think support and resistance is, and is it near it? And, you know, maybe 15% of the time or 20% of the time, I'd have a real good opinion for you. At least I'd be comfortable with the opinion. But I'm just wondering, yeah. if, you have, if you're trading bonds and currencies, no, no, not at all, no. Um, I tell you what, one of the reasons I started trading currencies a lot is because I used to do Elliott Wave a lot. And in the stock market, um, it used to work really well, uh, you know, the early mid-80s. And then it started not working so well at all. And I found that in Marks, uh, if I'm looking at the cash market, I can get it to work pretty well. So that's one of the reasons I really like Marks. Yeah.